Hi, Billy with Herefish. I want to give you some top 10 tips for how the best way to get started with Herefish. So here are the top 10 tips in list form. We're going to go in each of them in some detail, but you can refer back to this if you want to look at them all in one place. My first recommendation is don't try to reinvent the wheel. We build automation blueprints and the automation tutorial videos. We build those so that you can leverage them to jumpstart or have your instance get off the ground quicker. So definitely a great place to start as you're looking for ideas or looking to build out your initial automations. Starting with those blueprints or tutorials uh, is a great way. There's, there's over 75 examples of those and that will continue to grow. So really there's a lot of great ideas, get you jump started, and get you automating quicker than on your own. The next tip is to think in smaller groups. Oftentimes when I'm communicating with clients, they will get very excited and see kind of the vast possibilities of what Herefish can do. And I want you to be there and to get there, but it's gonna take time to execute and get all the way to the finish line. So we do have clients that have 300, 400 or 500 automations running that touch every aspect of their business. Ultimately, we wanna get you there too, but you're not gonna get there in a month. So as a best practice, think in small groups, I recommend of sizes of, of three to five so that you can focus on a foundational group. You won't get distracted by too many other ideas. And then you can get that group completed, tested, make sure it's, it's good and live. And then you can move on to the next three to five group. And by doing that, you build momentum, you build foundational automation blocks, and then things will get easier and easier. And before you know it, you'll have that momentum building. So you have 30, 40, 50 automations live and you're on your way to automating everything that you want to. I can't stress this one enough. I see it so commonly every single day dealing with emails or issues uh, that could be potentially avoided by adhering to this. You want to test and troubleshoot, especially when you're getting some of your first automations off the ground and running. So we have a separate video that goes through the best practices for testing and troubleshooting. I estimate about 95% of the initial mistakes that occur could be avoided if you follow that guidance in the video. The main biggest one being before you turn that automation live, check the list of the people or things that are going through the automation, spot check that just to make sure it is the right group, it is the, the intention that you wanna do, and then before you know it, after doing that successfully, it'll get easier and easier. And then you'll get to the point where you'll know exactly what's gonna happen based on your list criteria, your automations, and the need for this will, will lessen over time, but definitely wanna start out testing and troubleshooting to verify things are gonna work uh, the best way possible. Speaking of which, this is also a, a common one that comes up. Of course, we advise for, for to not make mistakes. So that is the, the beneficial path is to test and troubleshoot that so that mistakes don't occur. But if mistakes happen, which occasionally they do, and I speak from firsthand experience because I've made them all that are, that are possible, there is an order of automations that you can follow that will limit the severity or impact of any potential mistakes. So that's listed here kind of typically the, the least severe mistake possible is just a, a field or database update. And it's least severe because it's easily fixable. So you can re reverse that in most cases, um, it can undo, and then there's not obviously any communication aspect going with it. So um, typically pretty, pretty less uh, of, of a risk. The next is around internal communications. So these are notifications, alerts, reminders, task generations. Um, those obviously are going to your internal employees. So you, you wanna make sure they're good and you're not bombarding people 
But obviously if a mistake occurs, there's still not anything outbound or going external. So things are okay there. And then once you get into the external realm, obviously uh, kind of the kind side of things is typically a little bit less of a risk than having an outbound message mistakenly go out to the wrong clients or the wrong message. So that is the order uh, I, I would recommend kind of following if you're worried about mistakes or the severity of those mistakes that could occur. Um, but of course, to the previous point, testing and troubleshooting should mitigate the risk of those mistakes occurring. And that's the recommended path to, to utilize uh, you know, our expertise so those mistakes don't occur uh, from the get-go. The next tip is kind of a higher level one, but something I see quite often. And it's, it's just understanding, kind of having a self-awareness of what is expected from kind of the business level, whether that's the C-suite um, you know, or whoever is kind of the, the main business sponsor um, uh, for uh, implementing Curefish, because that can have a, obviously a great impact on where you want to start, how quickly you need to get automations created, and then where you should kind of uh, shift your, your focus to or spend uh, the most of your time. So getting alignment as in, in those areas between kind of the strategic high level and the execution is vital to, to ensuring that the first few months and the initial rollout of Purefish is gonna be a successful one from everyone involved. Now, another thing that kind of goes hand in hand with that is there is sometimes a tendency to start with some of the complicated and maybe very impressive automations. And that certainly can be done, but you risk either taking a long amount of time to get it done or kind of losing some of the excitement and momentum uh, just because it's, it's difficult to start something very complex as one of your first automations. So what I recommend is start with some easy wins, some things that will get your internal staff excited, which can help quite a bit on the buy-in front, but then also build your own confidence in the tool, in your ability to execute it. Uh, and then you know, after doing that for a bit of time, the complex uh, will become a bit easier to get done. So that the analogy I like to use here is you know, for, for anything that you're doing that's extremely complicated or, 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 or difficult, you wouldn't just jump right in to the complicated or difficult part. You kind of start with easy foundational blocks and build up to the more complex. So the same is going to apply for your use of your fish. So obviously a lot of materials that we put out and put together are designed to make things as easy as possible for you to get up to speed. And so my advice and, and what I've seen done as far as the, the, audit, the onboardings that go the best, the smoothest and get the most done is they absorb the training resources and materials like a sponge, you know, they, they soak that up. Um, and it's, it's all built and designed with, the, with kind of stages and, and things in mind to help guide you each step of the way. So you know, we're here, of course, to provide that support on, on video calls and things, but the resources and materials will allow you to access that knowledge and expertise at any time that's convenient for you, which can greatly amplify and, and quicken the pace that you get things accomplished. The next point, and this kind of harkens back a bit to kind of the self-awareness and, and aligning expectations, is you know understanding that to get the most value out of your fish requires a, a marathon mindset. Now, of course, you can achieve some sprint-based goals and get some easy wins accomplished, but your fish can touch so many aspects of your business positively that you want to think of it as a long-term investment that you're putting the appropriate resources involved with it so that you can get the most utility from the technology. Um, I mean, it can cover so many different areas of the business. It's important to get all of those subject matter experts 
from the business involved, but you know, also having you know a team or a dedicated person being able to learn the system, understand the nuance, how to build out your automations, that's where you're gonna get the most value from the tool. Number nine, I see commonly with if, if a client is not very sure about where they wanna start or there, there's some anxiety there that they don't wanna start off on, on, on the wrong way or focus on the wrong things. Um, I mean, the, the first bit of advice there is don't put so much pressure on yourself of starting exactly perfect. This is, goes back to where if you can think of in groups or, or small um, numbers of automations, then it doesn't really matter uh, the order in which you get those accomplished. You know, so long as you have a plan to kind of continue working through things and, and knocking things out. But in the case where you really are paralyzed and don't know where to start, my recommendation is focus on core recruiting activities or, and or things that are close to revenue and, and dollar generation activities. So you can't go wrong by improving the candidate uh, and or client experience. So things like placement touch points, um, submission reminders, uh, acknowledgement of web uh, applies and web responses. Those things are fantastic. Uh, getting a, a re-engagement strategy in place also can be a really great way to get started. See the more candidates that you can reach and talk to, the better it is for your business. And then of course, you know, kind of fixing data or improving the data health of your database has so many positive ripples that it can be a really positive core aspect to improve. Uh, so if you're unsure where to start, those are my recommendations there. And then lastly, keep in mind the ultimate goal of the, your Herefish training and onboarding is it is to get you so that you're at the, the knowledge and confidence level that you can self-serve, build out your own automations. Of course, we are always here to help troubleshoot or look things over and provide ideas for further things that can be done. But to get the most out of the tool, you're gonna want to have that ability internally to build things out, uh, to kind of make your automations come to life and as the old mantra says, we would much rather teach you how to fish than just give you fish. So those are the top 10 tips for the best way to get started with your Herefish implementation. And hopefully you find them helpful.